In this video, we'll be taking a look at the brand new Scythe Mugen 5 CPU cooler. Now this is the Black Edition version, so this is what's brand new. It's that it's using a black coat of paint on every component of the CPU cooler, as well as on the fans and other accessories that comes included, which is a really neat attention to detail from Scythe. Now this isn't a brand new cooler per se, they're just still using their Mugen 5 cooler design. So it's a tried and true design, and it's one that performs pretty well from what I've seen in the past reviews. So we know that this CPU cooler looks really good in terms of design, but can it actually perform well when cooling a CPU, which is, you know, the main task of a CPU cooler. It's not just meant to look cool. Although some people might beg to differ. Well, let's take a look in this video. First, we'll take a look at the cooler itself first, which is, here we go, as you can see, is a 120mm based CPU cooler with a 120mm, 25mm thick fan in the front of the cooler. Now, the heatsink itself is a 6 heat pipe array with 6 6 mm heat pipes and it uses a pretty beefy and thick heatsink arrangement. As you can see, the heatsink is actually really thick and it's more like a double thick compared to like the dual tower heatsinks, which kind of space out the heatsinks and put a fan in the middle. This one is just one big block of heatsink and a fan in the front, which I'm not sure would perform better than a dual tower heatsink. And I think it would be better if they actually just separate it into thinner heatsinks. But anyways, this is a pretty beefy heatsink, so I'm expecting pretty good performance out of it. Now for the mounting options for this cooler, you can obviously mount it on all the newer sockets from AMD and Intel. And it's pretty easy to do, they're basically just copying Noctua's Secufer mounting system. Or at least pretty similar in terms of mounting system. And that's not a bad thing, because Noctua makes pretty much the best CPU cooler mounting system in the business, so... I would pretty much expect everyone to just copy Noctua and I wouldn't see that as a problem because it just makes everyone's lives easier when mounting a cooler instead of using horrible mounting systems like just like Cooler Masters Hyper 2 on 2 for example on the original one. And you can see as well all their mounting systems and even the fan clips are coated in this black coat of paint which matches really well to the rest of the cooler and just really gives it a really complete and attention to detail look on the cooler which is really nice to see from Scythe as this just really makes it feel higher quality than if they just included silver fan clips and mounting hardware, for example. I mean, they even included a black screwdriver, which is just really awesome to see. And I would say that that screwdriver is actually really useful when building a PC, and I've actually used it a couple of times now, instead of just for mounting this cooler. And it's much more convenient than, you know, trying to find your own screwdriver to mount this heatsink. Because as you can see here, there's a hole on the top of the heatsink, and that's meant for the screwdriver to screw onto the mounting post on the bottom of the cooler. But anyways, the mounting system is pretty simple to install. So let's get on to putting it on the test bench and seeing how it performs on my test bench. Now on the test bench, it's gonna be a Core i7-5775C, which is a Broadwell desktop CPU. And it's a 14 nanometer CPU that I deleted for maximum heat transfer to the heatsink. So you can really see the differences in performance between the cooler designs. And it does consume around like 120 watts or so maybe slightly more than that, at full load at maximum overclock or 4.2 GHz. I'll also be doing a 4.1 GHz overclock for testing lower power outputs for weaker coolers, so they could at least pass the test. And I'll be doing both the max temperature and the average temperature over like a 30 minute time span or whatever is, whenever the coolers just basically reach equilibrium. And the coolers are also tested in a room that's not temperature controlled, but it's around 27 to 28 degrees Celsius all the time. And I'm just gonna use a thermometer and just calculate the delta temperature to the ambient temperature to get an accurate reading to compare the coolers to, just in case the ambient temperature does change, which is only again, just the difference of one degree Celsius. So anyways, let's take a look at the results. So the cooler's installation is actually also pretty simple. All you have to do is take the back plate and just put it through the motherboard. Then you take the four black plastic bits that are the standoffs and pop it through the screws that come through the motherboard from the back plate. And it should hold the back plate in place since it's kind of grippy on the metal. Then you take the metal braces that you attach the cooler to and put it on top of the posts and also then take the screws that you get for installation and screw them in really tight with your hand and you shouldn't really need a screwdriver just hand tight would do once this is done then you can start putting on the thermal paste onto the cpu then put the cooler on and just tighten the two screws together to hold the cpu down tightly and that's pretty much it and that's pretty much the same thing on the amd side except you use the amd's uh, included backplate instead of this and different set of screws 
First, let's see the 4.1 GHz results, where you can see the Cinebench R23 results at maximum fan speed. You can see the Scythe Mugen 5 is just trailing the Scythe Fuma 2 as well as the Noctua NHU9S, which I've used a Delta 3800 RPM fan, which is ear bleedingly loud. And honestly, I think this is a pretty decent result. It's not a dual fan or dual tower cooler like the Fuma 2, yet it's only a few degrees behind, precisely just about 3 degrees. And that's not even that bad. Now let's take a look at the Ida 64 FPU at 4.1 GHz. Here you can see the Scythe Mugen 5, again, is right behind the Noctua NHU9S with the Delta fan, and also about 3 degrees above the Scythe Fuma 2 which again is only very slightly hotter than the Scythe Fuma 2 which has two fans as well as a dual tower heatsink. It's also still far away from the Silverstone PF240W ARGB, but that's because it's a 240mm AIO which is gonna run way cooler because it has way more surface area and you know, it's water cooling. Now let's take a look at the 4.2GHz result, and here you can see the Scythe Mugen 5 still keeps up, where the deep cool Ice Edge, you know, the cheapest cooler in the roundup here, just kind of fails because it's got too hot. The Scythe Mugen 5 and even the Scythe Byako 2 still manages to cool the CPU just fine, and the Scythe Mugen 5 is again still only a few degrees warmer than the Scythe Fuma 2. But when we turn up the heat even more in Ida 64's FPU test, we can see that now the Scythe Mugen 5 actually fails to pass this test and it actually starts to throttle. And that's a bit unfortunate because it's only slightly throttling, it's slightly hotter than the Noctua NHU9S, which just barely passes this test. So if you're looking to really overclock your CPU, this might not be the best option because, you know, the bigger coolers definitely still perform better than this. Okay, that's the maximum fan RPM testing, but what about when it's noise normalized to about 45 dBA? Now I know a lot of people test at 35 dBA, but I think that's a bit too low and I don't mind a bit of fan noise, so I think 45 dBA is where it should be a comfortable threshold of noise. And here, the fan RPMs are a bit different with each cooler because they make different, amount, different amounts of noise, but the thing is with the Scythe Fuma 2, it's at 1200 RPM, which is actually its maximum RPM as well. So the results on the Scythe Fuma 2 is not going to get worse, whereas the other coolers are going to be slightly hotter in this test. And here, because of that, we can see the Scythe Mugen 5, we had to slow down the fan from 1600 or so RPM to 1400, which is just a slight reduction, but it still increased the temperatures a bit more and increased the gap to the Scythe Fuma 2. And this is also apparent when we turn up the heat in Ida 64's FPU test even while still at 4.1 GHz. But this test is not as heavy because you can see the Scythe Biako 2 and the Noctua NHU9S still is able to keep up. So let's take a look at the 4.2 GHz results, where here you can see the Noctua NHU9S with its Delta fan turned down actually got beat out by the Scythe Byako 2. Now I don't have the original Noctua NFA9 fan that's included, but I would have guessed that it probably will perform better and actually pass this test still, because the Delta is really quite loud and I really had to turn it down quite a lot. Now for the Scythe Mugen 5, you can see the gap is still slightly bigger to the Fuma 2 than when both are at maximum fan speed, but it's only about 4 degrees, so it's only still about only 1 degrees hotter than when at maximum fan speed. And now at 4.2 GHz with Ida 64's FPU test, which is again really hot, um, yeah, it failed, obviously, because it even failed at maximum fan speed, so to pass this test, you really need a really beefy cooler that not only has enough surface area, but also a heat carrying capacity that's really high because you want to be able to take the heat from the base of the cooler to the heat sink stack really quickly, which you'll only be able to get with a really optimized heat sink and heat pipe design or a really big 240mm AIO with water flowing to the copper base plate, which really transfers heat really fast. So as you can see there, this cooler, well, it performs pretty well. It does not beat the Scythe Fuma 2, which is a more expensive and bigger heat sink than this. But for its price point and I think for you know what you get with this cooler, the performance is quite decent. And it does look like it's not performing too well here, but I really haven't tested that many coolers yet. But as you can see, this is also not that far off from the Fuma 2 and the noise levels are not really that bad either.
This fan only spins to 1600 RPM at the most at the peaks, so it's not even that fast of a fan. And because of its high angle of attack and lots of fan blades, it does move quite a lot of air. I think the issue with the performance on this cooler is that they're using six heat pipes in the arrangement on the heatsink that basically leaves the last like two heat pipes in the middle area here not really doing much to the cooling. And that's because the fan's airflow kind of just exits out the sides of the cooler. And that's quite expected because airflow takes the path of least resistance. So from the fan's uh, airflow, which is the highest pressure zone in here, the airflow just basically tries to get out of the side the most uh, instead of going through the whole heatsink, which is understandable in terms of physics. So I would say that you might be able to improve the performance on this cooler by installing the optional second fan with the included fan clips if you really wanted to. And I might be able to test that in a future video as well, if I can improve the performance of this cooler by adding a second fan or maybe even adding some baffles to the side to direct the airflow. But anyways, I think this is a pretty decent CPU cooler. It does perform uh, quite well, even though it's not the best one, but its price point also reflects that it's it should not be the best cooler. It's still a lot cheaper than like the bigger Noctua's and also the bigger dual tower heat sinks. And you also get a really nice black finish on the cooler, which will really look really nice on pretty much any build, I would say. So that's another advantage. And the mounting system is also really good as well, which is really nice to see from Scythe because now they've upgraded it and it's actually really easy to use and really easy to install the coolers. And even on the AMD system, it's just a different bracket, but it's the same sort of way. So it's really simple and straightforward to do. So I would say it's a really good beginner CPU cooler as well for someone just getting into PC building just because of the ease of use. But yeah, that's it for this video. I hope you do enjoy it and maybe leave a like and also comment down below what you think of the CPU cooler if you would like to get it because of its looks or if you think the performance is not enough for you. Honestly, I think the performance is enough for pretty much anyone if you're just looking for running your CPU at stock settings, even up to a 5950X, it should do still just fine. Remember that the 5775C is a really hot running CPU just because it's a just a quad core and sucking up 120 watts while overclocked in my testing. So it's a really heat dense processor, even more than the Ryzen CPUs. But yeah, anyways, that's all for this review. I hope you do enjoy it and thank you for watching.